வணக்கம் குட் ஈவினிங் நமஸ்காரம் ஐ வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் டு த மந்த்லி லெக்சர் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் ப்ரோக்ராம் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயின் டு ஹேவ் அ டாக் ஆன் இந்தியன் ஆன்டிக்விட்டி போட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஷிப்ஸ் கல்ச்சர்ஸ் பை ஹேம் சந்திர ராவ் பிஃபோர் தட் ஐ வில் கிவ் யூ அ ப்ரீஃப் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் அபவுட் தமிழ் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் ட்ரஸ்ட் அண்ட் தென் ஐ வில் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் த ஸ்பீக்கர் அண்ட் தென் வி வில் கெட் ஆன் டு த ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் ரைட் அவே Tamil Heritage Trust is uh, formed about 10 years ago by Professor Swaminathan and uh, we do four major uh, activities. First one is a monthly meet where we meet here first Saturday of every month at 5.30 and we discuss anything from arts, literature, uh, temples, iconography, uh, sculptures, uh, uh, you know, things like uh, you know, what you see today, Indian heritage. Uh, so there is a lecture by uh, an expert or an enthusiast uh, every month here you can uh, mark your calendar first saturday 5:30 and uh, there will also be a book that will be circulated behind if you put your email there you will get notification on the uh, monthly lecture <clears throat> then the next program we do is what we call pechi kacheri it's a two day event that's coming up uh, in december for us it's an annual event that we do where we organize a series of 10 lectures over a period of two days and this year uh, it's on uh, the pandyas so we will have a series of topics on pandyas uh, for the two days presented by 10 experts in the field so we'll start from pandya history to you know the temples the great temples of pandyas like kalugumalai Uh, and go on so this will happen on uh, saturday sunday morning to evening at uh, tamil virtual academy in kotturpuram the third program that we do is called a site seminar which happens once a year in january where we pick a place in india and we go there and study that place in detail we have uh, gone to places like gujarat orissa uh, trinalveli uh, uh, you know badami patadakal Uh, several areas in india this year it was on madhya pradesh in january and the next site seminar in january 2020 is going to be in kumbagonam based on and we are going to cover the the chola architecture and the chola temples and the chola art so that's the third one the fourth program uh, that we do is a series of uh, uh, classes and workshops so there is a, there are two uh, workshops we do one is a one day workshop called how to see a temple where we cover things like temple architecture you know uh, how to see the icons that you see in the temple it's a one day workshop where there are three lectures in the morning and the afternoon there is a temple visit so it happens in chennai and we offer this program once in two months so you can look at these are very nominally paid programs tamil heritage itself is a non profit and you know most of the people who teach or come and give lectures here or do it for free and uh, then there is a program on museum called how to see a museum where we take you through the amravati gallery the bronze gallery the sculpture gallery and the copper plates inscriptions and all uh, then we also do a malai study tour where we take you to mahabalipuram which is a world heritage unesco world heritage center near chennai the pallava uh, you know uh, art capital so so you can say right where you know you have the shore temple you have the caves you have the monoliths and everything so we say all this are available and the and the you know if you follow our facebook page tamil heritage trust you know you can get notifications about all these events uh if you give your email as i said uh, before earlier in the notebook that will get uh, circulated uh, in a while you will also get the notification on this now on to today's topic uh I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Hemachandra Rao. He is an uh, architect by profession. He is born in Ernakulam, Kochi in 1939 and he has been a resident of Madras since 1941. He did his early education and undergraduation in Madras and pursued civil engineering at Birla Institute of Technology, Ranchi. At a very young age, he got interested in stamp collecting and started specializing in stamps with ships and other lighthouses as well so the ships and the boats and lighthouses the bug bit him very early in his life <laughs> and he, in his professional career he he was serving for gannon and dunkley and uh, mrs tarapur of madras and from 1984 onwards he worked as a consultant architect on his own 
He retired in 2001 and he took a full-time research on the beautiful arch bridges of Madras, the lighthouses of Madras and the famous uh, man-made Buckingham Canal. He has traveled the whole length of the Buckingham Canal and visited many lighthouses in India, starting from the West Bengal coast all the way to the uh, Gujarat coast. He is a founder of uh, Madras Heritage Lovers Forum. And uh, here is the most interesting thing. Uh, he has converted his house in Chennai into a maritime heritage museum. And I've been there. It's a wonderful place. Uh, you can spend easily three to four hours, get lost in the boats. And what he has there, he has a huge collection of boat replicas, such as brass boats, popular Kerala boats. And he also has a 16 feet wooden boat in the Heritage Muse Museum, which is believed to be a replica of the one of the boats that piled in the Buckingham Canal in the 1870s. He's conducted many heritage walks uh, during the Madras Day celebrations, and I uh, request uh, Hem Chandra Rao to give uh, uh, today's lecture. Please, sir. Namaskar. Thank you, Shiva, for the wonderful words. I thought I'm nobody in the big ocean of Madras, but somebody has put me where you everybody comes to know. I didn't know this biography simply said by Mr. Shiva. I don't know where he got it from. Surprise. Yes. Friends, this is my passion. <coughs> From the early age itself, somehow I love the sea, the watercrafts, and connected with watercraft, what guides them? Lighthouses. That is my, this thing. Up to 2001, yes, like everybody else, we were professionals slogging day and night for the upkeep of our family. <coughs> then comes that bitter day when you retire and the next day you don't know what to do. Some of my friends I used to see, they see just look up the ceiling, what to do next? But fortunately, my hobby came to my rescue. As she said, she was it. I came to Chennai in 41 as a two, three years old. And all of a sudden, after my retirement, I found out a great discovery. Even now I will come confessing, I don't know full of Chennai. I don't know. When I was passing through near Hindu, I saw the bridge. Today's name is Periyar Palam and that gave me something in my gray cells. So there onwards, friends, like a student, I used to go to Tamil Nadu archives, sat there for 17 years, till 2016 or 17, going through the huge volumes of records created for us by the Britishers. Yes, I emphasize, created by the Britishers. But for them, I don't think we would have known anything about the Buckingham Canal itself. So, I did a small research in all these years on bridges, Buckingham Canal, and the lighthouse of Madras, 1796. Thereon started the journey of the lighthouses, as you are told, from Ganga Sagar, West Bengal, to Koteshwar in westernmost Gujarat. It took me three years driving my own car with my friend Vincent along with me. We saw all those uh, beautiful lighthouses built during the last century. Now, afterwards started this voyage. What is this voyage? As I told you, very much interested and curious to know the boats, 
ships who made them who designed them how it was designed or when it was started <coughs> so thus this journey of a voyage of boats and ship sculptures came friends this is not yesterday's project it has been long there for last 10 to 12 years and today it has been brought to you first time first time so in every this thing we always pray to god for a safe opening especially the mariners they want to have a safe voyage is not a journey but it's a voyage in this way so very first one i will tell you it is a beautiful thing this is jalanath the lord of the sea and after seeking his blessings we start our voyage that is all that's why jalanath it is a very curious thing just yesterday i came to know from where i got this picture this was found in a friend's house on the golden jubilee volume of sindhya navigation company i tried my level best to find out where this sculpture or this lord is there which is this temple in gujarat obviously it must be gujarat but no none of the queries by internet gave me this internet gives me only jagannath puri jagannath but not jalanath now why this is very very important is the shloka at the bottom you see the thing very beautiful shloka do thou convey us in a ship across the sea for our welfare friends this is from rigveda so ancient and that is down is the sanskrit for this thing very beautiful words so with these blessings we start our voyage on exploring the antiquity of our maritime heritage ours is a naturally everybody knows a vast country criss crossed by rivers large lakes and surrounded by three vast oceans somewhere or other the primitive man has to cross them at some point of time now how do we know this yes we go in our time scale about 4000 years ago precisely 2500 bc the famous mohenjo-daro excavations revealed so many things about our culture and our heritage today it is in pakistan mohenjo-daro has yielded lot of artifacts like any other excavation lot of artifacts some of them have shown beautiful ships boats a herd potsherd has shown a single masted ship and there are many seals also available seals terracotta seals and also clay models at mohenjo-daro now we try to classify them in a, some methodical order as our ancestors how we grew from 4500 bc so when we have a different subjects and i also want to confess here this is not my original work but try to get this information from various sources and bring to you in one form unfortunately friends you will not find all this thing in one book or anything it is in so many places you have to go and search like i did it during my tamil nadu archival sojourn so many books you have to go pages after pages even now i know i have not done fully well i confess but 
the previous scholars have done and i am just following and bringing everything before you in a very very simple form now how do we classify this and where do we find this interesting boats in sculptures where do we find first naturally excavated sites this is where the ancient civilization grew then comes the man is wandering here and there and his past time he did something on rocks because he doesn't have any other media or medium so he did some scribbling inscription etching and all those things on rock rocks can be an open space or it can be covered also rock rock art then actually the man usually stayed in shelters the natural shelters were nothing but caves large caves very poorly may be eliminated whatever it is but he used this caves where he was dwelling with his whole clan to sell something because there was not a ling- language or lippi or anything so he started doing this thing first he did what all his surroundings pastoral then he said hunting he did hunting scenes and along with this came some this thing etchings or art of ships and boats we will come to you surely some are there in paintings and some are there in sculptures form then this uh, ancient man grew up in intelligence in everything and slowly started building places of worship temples the temples became a huge area wherever stones are available he did it in stone carving wherever a terracotta was there terracotta temples so next was his temples where he put his ideas in sculpture form including boats there are many other sculptures but we will restrict ourselves to boats apart from sculptures he did his frescoes in the temples frescoes like in the caves the temples as i told you can be stone temple made of stone or terracotta when it comes to terracotta only one place is there in india west bengal most of the temples are there terracotta because it is gangetic alluvial soil is very good to prepare and burn clay i have not gone yet to bengal we are planning to go there are about 120 temples there showing terracotta plaques with boats and some of them showing ships is a very beautiful thing terracotta then comes as he grows more and more intelligent after temple he start building monuments and most of the monuments they are coming they are coming what happened no oh, something else is coming okay doesn't matter or did i press here somewhere my mistake here yeah. i don't know quite possible thank you sorry then comes the monuments most of the monuments are done during huge ones after this buddha period buddha lot of monuments for example we have got large monuments at sanchi amravati and elsewhere so this bodhagaya also is their monument this is where unless until you have got a very very keen eye you will not find this boat sculptures either in sanchi or in amaravati you must go and see that then only you will be able to know then comes other thing like worshiping in the temples people worshiped their heroes in a community a clan 
somebody will be there who might have saved the whole community by fighting the enemy either on the land or through the ships warships these are all called palia stones or virakal in tamil or hero stones beautiful ones they are also creative art a small stone of the site to fit they have done so much from many sources i got the hero stones are at goa museum well preserved at buj museum in gujarat only one was there then some other place near called armada in gujarat armada on the open ground but well maintained all these things showed beautiful ships which you will be seeing now this thing so hero stones even now people go there and pray for the departed soul or hero we may call then comes as you say very unique thing they buried their dead in many this thing one was urns big urns ancients buried their dead in big urns and some of the urns have got a beautiful painting of a boat this was anath at inam gaon in near pune the archaeological department of deccan college they found it very beautiful then comes terracotta seals and the excavation you will get portraits everything but along with the is another unique item small one terracotta seals which showed boats and ships especially mostly found at chandraketugad in west bengal chandraketugad in west bengal then in many time in the historians stumble upon a dark patch they know this side they know this side but in the middle there's a dark patch not knowing who was ruling or what is happening there at this period fortunately the numismatics that coin people collect it comes to play they give the answer many coins in the past from the days of punch marked coins that's the er- earliest one boats were punch marked on the coins and you know about the details of it that also we will see then finally as we started after praying the lord of the sea we come to another very very interesting thing when we both went my son vincent went to goa last year while returning i happened to stumble upon a bookstore there i got a book written by one dr pratima kamath on boat deities of goa the main deity is mahishasura mardini beautifully seated in a boat sculpture it may be not more than 2 feet 3 feet high so we went after that we could see about 5 this year so that with that i am coming to the end of this story of the voyage the voyage which started for us at 2500 bc at indus valley civilization i am going to bring it down to goa and stop there now we start next day you see the beautiful clay model which was excavated at mohanjodaro a clay model very beautiful one is at mohanjodaro this is again the left hand side is the one single masted ship a port shed on port shed and the other one is also on a this thing you can see the man sitting high on the stern with two oars two oars and this is a ship and i am very happy to tell you this, this left hand side the department of post india have honored by bringing out a 15 rupee stamp on this 
under maritime heritage they have brought a stamp today is very very i should say a bit valuable today so the other one you can see a typical reed boat it is reed because these are the reeds are big tall grasses are grown near the rivers etc and they used to build reed boats so this is from mohanjodaro now coming down from mohanjodaro we come to our tamil nadu alagan kulam i think uh, must have gone in 2002 or 2003 there i should have told i i started this thing long back this project i'd been there but i couldn't see this in the museum the museum that uh, portrait was i couldn't see that day but algan kulam was a sleepy village just 24 kilometers from ramanadapuram <coughs> where some portraits were excavated depicted boat and a ship that's the most important and i got a good news from madras musings mr muttiyas paper where a detailed study was done there they decided this boat is nothing but a wattai in tamil nadu wattai but the ship created a lot of thing and finally <coughs> a professor from i think usa he categorically said this is a roman ship Uh, with a, with a supported by rigs and sails with two paddles but unfortunately half the ship is missing that side you see the right side is the wattai and the left is the ship with the over everything but half is miss that portrait is missing so finally they concluded this is a roman ship this is uh, finally done by um, mr nadana kashinathan finally this one and i won't forget this photograph was the kindness of him i went to him and he was kind enough to give this photograph nadana kashna then this is alagan kulam beautiful one that shows the romans have come all the way here to our south southern coast so eastern coast this is what i want to tell one more thing about my passion or my creation or my creating a story this is a cover usually when i go anywhere usually when i go anywhere i carry a bunch of covers with stamp after finishing the this thing with the subject with the lighthouses or this or anything go to the nearest post office and request the postmaster kindly give me a chapa clear cancellation so this becomes a record for me i had visited this place so this is alagan kulam you can see 2004 i think so then huh? something i had gone there 2004 as i told you this back the, the ship is there and uh, this is another passion whichever lighthouses we had gone we had gone like that anything even now the temples you had gone to see the boat it is there everywhere i go to the postmaster request it they help me so this is alagan kulam this is another way of creating a record not merely just thing for record now comes the second stage after excavation we come the ancient man has gone to somewhere he wants to show his skill maybe he had got implements like iron chisel and hammer he started showing his skill on a rock rock art early man mostly lived in natural sheltered caves during their leisure periods having no languages except sign language he beautifully transmitted his thoughts about his surroundings and daily life etc in art form neatly inscribing them on the cave's interior or on stores over hillocks in the open they are so clever to mix colors to give a brightness to their art mostly in ochre red today some are surviving and others are fallen prey to vandals this is a very sorry state one i'll tell you 
Charmadi, a beautiful cave on a hill in in Gujarat. Mr. Vincent didn't come that day for that. There, when you enter, you see, you have to see very clearly because again, one likes, two ships you can see, red color, two ships. I went uh, with my ordinary camera. I don't have a sophisticated professional camera. See the beauty of the ships, sail ships, two ships, one after another. It is on a nice hillock in a cave. Nearby are different rock arts like deer hunting and pastoral life and so on and so forth. But somehow these two have escaped extreme vandalism. Extreme vandalism. Somehow I could catch my own camera. Uh, these two ships, which are very beautiful. But many books give only line diagram. No book has given you a photograph like this. They are given you only a line diagram. But unfortunately, when I posted a letter at Charmadi post office, it didn't come back to me. It must have gone along the ship somewhere. <laughs> somewhere it must have gone. You see, this is all the beautiful ones. This is in our own backyard. It's in our own backyard. This is called Kilwalai in, I think, Vilupuram something, I forgot. But anyhow, see the beauty. If you see very clearly, again, line diagram is there. Four people are standing in a curved, curvilinear hull boat with a pole. You can see a pole there. Or that. Yeah, this is the pole. No? And if you see another one, you will see a crossbar with a parallel another bar called log this thing. That is called outrigger to stabilize that boat from hoisting. No? So that is one at Kilwalai in Tamil Nadu. You see, this is another one. The place called, very big name, Kamaya Gaundan Patti is still now down south, still down south, Kamaya Gaundan Patti and it is a beautiful Katumaram, which is the ancient of all, mother of all the distinct photographs, Katumaram, a man standing, balancing himself along the waves and trying to go. Unfortunately, the rock, this thing is not at all clear. It is only like that. So, line diagram was adopted. See? See the cancellation, how beautifully that fellow has given to me. Beautiful cancellation. Now, after rock, the man comes back to the cave. Rock art is over, cave art is over. Then he started sculpting. Maybe he got better instrument now better chisels and better other equipments. So in his spare time, he does the only sculpture inside a cave, I'll tell you, was in Canary. Nowhere else in cave you have got sculptures. Nowhere. Near Mumbai, formerly a small island called Salsetti, which is now connected to the mainland. Unfortunately, no photograph is available. No photographs are available. But the ship is dated to be 2nd century AD. Very nice, this thing. But it's very, you can't see because so dark. And represent a wreck in the sea. It represents a wreck. In which two men on board are praying to God. Padma Pani for rescue. Again, Jataka tales. Padma Pani comes in Jataka, Buddha Jataka tales. First time, this is first time. A sea voyage is clearly depicted in a sculpture. This is from the words of the famous Radha Kumud Mukherjee, 1912. Radha Kumud Mukherjee, 1912. He is the person who started all this thing. <laughs> so, this is caves. So, I can give you only a Kaneri cave photograph there. Kaneri cave photograph which is near Mumbai now. Previously, it was an island. Elephanta Caves is different. Canary is different. I have taken one 
postal cover with a very old painting about 1780 or something a painting was done of the scales and uh, i sent it to the today that area is called borivilli east bombay borivilli east is not longer island it's so borivilli east and uh, it is to be seen there caves sculptures now he must have got a bit of this thing he started the paintings inside the caves inside the caves he started painting what better caves then ajanta gives you all these things again a repository of buddhism buddhist jataka tales are there in this thing in ajanta caves one sees four types of sea going sail boats or ships cave number 1 the painting represents mahajanaka jataka panel the boat is represented twice in the same panel one on the top and one at the bottom on the top one at the bottom it has eyes painted in the bow they always say even roman ships they had eyes painted on the boat because they say the ships can see so they painted eyes in the roman ships you can see so nothing but we also have but maybe earlier period painted both at stern and at stem we have done with a canopy umbrella steersman on a ladder the boat has three masts very well defined three masts are there with sails the hull of the boat is curvilinear means very much round like this curvilinear and resembles a crescent crescent of the moon the stern and stem are projected like this projected in cave number 2 if you go the ship is depicted with three mast and with sails and you will see some jars there if you see go clearly you see some jars and with two small platforms at the fore and at aft also decorated again with eye design just got boat the cave 13 some so 17 is very very curious cave very curious where you see two boats you will see much exaggerated elephants on one horses on the other this is supposed to say prince vijaya this landing at sri lanka or ceylon at that time with the relic of buddha you see now we can go and see that you see the thing this is the one ship in the cave number 1 see the how pro is there you can see the eye also i you can see a cabin the steer man is sitting on the high on a ladder so he can have a clear view and people are that uh, some senior man is sitting in the thing with other people at the stern one fellow is paddling or with oar see the same thing but in a, we are omitted that the human being there to show how the cabin looks like that and how that uh, steer and oar are there very clear this is a uh, cave number 1 same thing another one the man is praying you can see again three sails are there eye is there for the boat both the thing and is praying to padma pani to save him from some catastrophe the fort this uh, painting is very very dull so line diagram method is adopted there line diagram line diagram this is that prince vijaya's visit to ceylon see the amount of uh, elephants he is taking horses he is taking from this thing we conclude this is not a ship maybe it is a barge huge barge which is being taken with lot of oars lot of oars are there and most important you see the face that uh, stem it's a it is a makara muga that is called makara muga see that thing now i give one example of this uh, postal again the top stamp is a hyderabad stamp issued by hyderabad princely state those days and it has got a pictorial cancellation of present at the bottom showing ajanta caves very beautiful one ajanta caves 
now comes the man has gone he wants to pray so he builds temples he builds temples the first thing he does he is doing painting painting frescoes i just say a shiva temple in tirupudai marudur amba samudram taluk tirunelveli district in tamil nadu has very beautiful mural painting on the second tier of the gopuram not inside the temple but on the gopuram on the gopuram the ships have mast rigs and sails six horses you could see inside the ship and arabs there is a crow's nest on the top with the top of the mast for man to go there and see look where the land comes now what does it say tamil nadu kings in those days used to get horses from arabs arabs and there was a what i should say some uh, very interesting the arabs were so cunning they never put horse shoes on their horses so very easily the horses died because of uh, this thing hooves gone because they never told horse shoe how to put so that's how they started selling their horses here i don't know how far it is true but it's there in the historical fact we pleaded with the priest to allow us who was sitting there to go up he was stubborn he said nothing doing he said go there go here and take permission so we came back but before that i had asked archaeological survey of india at madras to give me something this is the famous temple tiruvidai marudur you see tirupudai marudur sorry and as i came to my rescue they gave me this beautiful seat too you can see the ship you see beautiful horses 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 arabs are there and again this thing you can see the fishes also flowing very beautiful this is another boat another boat here this is two panel separate separate panel but imagine how people could have gone there such a narrow place it seems and did all this intricate work very very intricate work and they left it for us to go and enjoy but our own brother not allowing me to go and see you see but one good thing happened myself and vincent while coming back we went to pondicherry and as usual we went to french institute of pondicherry in the they took me to their library so the library i thought what book can be here this tiruvidai marudur temple book was right on the <laughs> table i just grabbed it vincent grabbed some other books in that book beautiful photographs there they have been allowed but uh, no but beautiful so that is another thing now after temples we come to the man made structures called now monuments monuments to do something the first thing in the comes is sanchi stupa you see sanchi stupa several monuments were built to propagate buddha's teachings only two monuments show boats in this sanchi two representations of boats are depicted on the western gateway richly carved in detail within uh, with a woman and a man both are seen rowing the boat with oars bow and stern are pointed and rigged like this hull planks are sewn together they can you can see the joint of the planks how they are done beautiful it is a river boat naturally now this is western gateway now on eastern gateway again the pro of the boat is seen pro but like a saru saru sardula sardula and the stern is designed as upturned fish tail we'll see that in the center there is a cabin with a bearer holding an umbrella unfortunately the lower portion of the boat is missing and it is conjectured it is also a river boat but line diagram helped us see the western gate i'm sorry eastern gate and you can see the beauty of the thing here see see here 
This is the three people, two people. You see, this may be somewhere here or here. There is a gateway. We don't know. Unless until you go, at least you know it is on the eastern gateway. So you can spend time and try to get, you see. In my album, I got a one full page, but this is a smaller one. You see? Ah, big one is here, correct. Big one. A big one is there. Very clearly this is shown. You see? And you can see the waves, how they have made it. Waves. Waves, etc. And show the birds, all the things. Yeah? Very good. This is the western gate. See the beautiful shape of the boat. See, it is like this. Like this. This is the fish tail. Fish tail. Unfortunately, this is broken. And now they have done like this. This is the western gate. You can see the western gate. But what we did is scholars conjecture how it could have been. Originally, they came to this, you see. Full curlinear with a oar and see the face at the stem. Again, that cover was got cancelled at Sanchi. Sanchi, you see. Sanchi. Then comes slightly down in Andhra Pradesh is Amaravati Stupa. This is a Satwana monument and a ship in relief panel sculpted on a pillar again, a pillar, small pillar. Ferguson, the scholar, has described it like this. As I told you, you know, from many people have got together and brought it in one place. The portion is too much mutilated, first, is completely mutilated, to be deciphered. The center and lower portion show a boat or a ship, in which one man is paddling and another one is worshipping a relic. On the throne were two relic bundles are there, two relic bundles. The bottom of the ship is flat. The pro is designed also flat and square in shape. One seated at the stern and one is holding an oar, manipulating the boat. Now you can see the thing. This is Amaravati Stupa, beautiful. In one pillar it is there, they say. You have to go and find out which pillar now. Now, you see, this is the thing. See, this is the this thing. Flat one, they said. And this is the boat. See, flat boat. Flat boat. One fellow is uh, holding the, an oar. This is a relic. And that man is praying. And one fellow is holding the parasol or uh, umbrella. And other people are all praying, you see. Maybe it is a coming shore scene. They have come to the shore and people are welcoming it. The relics must be. The relics, that's why. Uh, it's uh, this thing. This is Amaravati Stupa. Again, a cover got cancelled at Amaravati Stupa. Now, temples become and sculptures. Till then it was monuments, now we are coming to temples and sculptures inside a temple. While travelling from Muttam Lighthouse, early last year or early this year, myself Vincent, we came to this temple, having known all those things, we came. Tirubhuvanai and Tirumangalam are very beautiful temples. Many a temple in our country depict boats in their sculptures, mostly on the walls or on pillars. In Tamil Nadu, one can see this in about five temples you can see. That's the five temples we have got. Tirubhuvanai, it is near Pondicherry. A beautiful panel on the outer wall of this age-old temple of Sri Vardaraja Piramal depict a boat with raised and upturned pro and raised stern which is seen higher than pro. This is an ASI monument. It was kept open but we could go easily inside and um, Vincent started going one side, I go and say, where to search it? Finally we found a small one it is, very small one 
And uh, that is, I'll show you now. See, Thirubhuvanai. This is a beautiful one. And the other one is uh, Thirumangalam. So, Thirumangalam is near Lalgudi. The temple dedicated to Sama Vedi Shurar depicts a boat with upturned stern and stem. It looks like a Vattai, a type of swin boats. No, swin. You can do This is described by the famous another archaeologist, Jean Dulace of Pondicherry, French Institute of Pondicherry, that man. See the thing? This is nothing but the famous river crossing scene of Rama, Lakshmana, Sita and the boatman Guha. You can see the four people. This has become a very famous with lot of you know, sculptures, that is lot of generation even. Even in Hampi, which we are yet to go, but I know, in the Hajara Raja Ramachandra temple, Hajara Ramachandra temple, the same thing is depicted. I am not showing that because I didn't go there so far. We are going there. So this temple is a great repository of boat sculptures, other than so many other sculptures. Now comes very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. We are talking about sculptures on walls, pillars, etc. But a unique temple in Odisha show a portion of it top as an upturned ship. A portion of the temple, portion, not the wall or this thing, portion of it as an upturned ship. It is so because no other temple in India has a portion of it as in this temple. It's the only temple. This is situated on the western banks of the large Bindu Sagar Lake, which is connected to the Bay of Bengal through a river. And this shows this was a thriving inland port. It was inland port, inside port. And who is the guy who gave us? Again, Radha Kumud Mukherjee, 1912. He has written in this in his book. This looks like an upturned ship. And when I went last time, uh, he, Vincent couldn't come, but I went to this temple. You see the thing. This is a close-up. This is a close-up. You can see the thing. See? You see? Ship. Beautiful. Upturned ship as uh, envisaged by R.K. Mukherjee. Now, the other one. See the temple. Beautiful. Today, the temple is nearly four feet below the ground level. I'm sorry, road level. <laughs> see? The road is coming up. So, the temple is four feet near, below the road level. And I had been there. I had been there. You see? And from somewhere I was watching all these things, somewhere, somewhere one priest comes. Priest comes and he asked me what I am doing. I told him so many things. Then he said, first you come. What? He took me to Sanctum Sanctorum. He took an arti. Then he said, yes, now you can. Then he told me so many stories about the sculptures outside. Beautiful sculptures. Then he came out. We both came out. Then he said, sir, you cannot go like this. You go to Lingaraj temple, which is very close by. I will, I will take you. So he took me to Lingaraj temple. But unfortunately, as usual, photography was taboo. Couldn't take any photograph. And secondly, it was uh, nearly one o'clock hot and I couldn't walk barefoot on the stone flooring. So I told him, I cannot see 108 uh, Shiva temples. Maaf kijiye. So we came out. It was so scorching hot. Can't see anything. That is uh, Vaital the old temple. Vaital the old temple. Only one so far with an upturned this thing of the Sanctum Sanctorum Gopuram. Coming again back to Tamil Nadu, a beautiful temple. Alagiya Nambirayar temple at Tirukuran Kudi. Tirukuran Kudi. Ah, Tirukuran Kudi. Tamil Nadu. The temple is Nanguneri Taluk, Trinalveli district, Tamil Nadu. A beautiful ship representation in the gateway of this temple. We didn't go through the main gate. 
They said, you can take the car around. So we went to the other side. And when an old man was sitting there, he asked me what they want. When I told him, then he said, oh, you are also from Pondicherry Institute, I will show you. Then immediately took us and showed me there. The craft with several stakes of planks hewn together, the hull has a platform and an open deck. Lower portion of the mast is visible, only lower portion. Dated 15th century, gunwale is highly decorated with shields, maybe warship. A stern in elevated platform for the helmsman to this thing. Again, G. Niloche, 1987. He conjectured this is the, must be the thing. Now we will see the ship. This is the main entrance, but we went to the left and entered it. This is the main gateway. Very beautiful gateway. Very beautiful gateway. See the beauty. See the ship. This is on the main gateway, very high. Very high. But since it was a gateway, a lot of light was available for me. Light. Brilliant light. And these are the shields, you see. These are all the shields. These are all the people who are there. In the, and see the ship up to it. Very beautiful. Very beautiful sculpture right on the top of the of this thing. Yes, 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 small one. That it looks like a warship. They're coming with the thing, with that thing. Then while coming, our one good friend, I'll not forget, Mr. Kombai Anwar. He phones us. While coming, please go to this temple called Ati Nata Alwar Temple at Alwar Tirnagar. You will see two beautiful ship uh, boats there. So we went there. Unfortunately, it was we searched and got it. It was in a mandabam, not on the main there, but very high ceiling, and it was on the beam, beautiful beam. Light was very much wanted, but anyhow, we took. Now this is a Perumal temple, to be a thousand years old. And situated at 24 kilometers from Tindam Valley to Tukuria district. While traveling from Muttam Lighthouse, a friend told us to visit this temple where two beautiful boats are seen on the beam. Finally, we found this in Krishna Mandapam. It is just side of the main temple district. Quite high and not much of a light. Not much of a light. Now you see the beautiful Adinatha Alva temple. See, this is the main entrance, you see. This is the main entrance. Now we go inside. You see that, you can see there, see, one, two. Very high on the ceiling, almost ceiling. This is a beam, the beam. See, light was wanting, so, but anyhow we could take, it was very clear, with this thing, with several people inside, see. You couldn't go very much into detail of this, this thing, but I couldn't get any more information on this. I couldn't get. Then comes the thing for the departed souls. Hero stones or Paliya stones or Virakallu. Virakallu. Hero stones or Paliya stones or Virakal are sculpted stone slabs, slabs and erected by the community to commemorate the heroism of the dead person. The person may be a warrior or otherwise, but whose act might have saved the village. He might be even a hunter. He might have killed a lion. We don't know. Some of the stones, mostly in Gujarat and Karnataka, depict warships. They are in open ground, while some are retrieved and kept in the museum, like Archaeological Survey of India in Goa. Otherwise, they are all lying open. But in Gujarat, they have been well kept, well maintained. Now, one place is there in Mumbai called Exer village. Now, again, it is coming to the town. Exer village, where five stones are there depicting ships. Beautiful. They are there. No? You see, that is the one, Exer. You see, this is one. They are also well maintained, but others are all mutilated, gone. See? Somebody is preserving it. This is an unknown, unknown place, I don't know. I just brought it to you only to show a hero stone, some high, and in a ship, you see? This is a very beautiful ship. And here also you can see the ships, you see? 
warriors are the showing this is a pakka warship you see you can see now very clearly the bottom slab see the ships how many oars are there you see how many oars are there it's a fighting ship again you see another panel so many oars oar ships there are oar ships again this is inside the asi in in uh, goa but better one is there you see see beautiful this are black and white given to me by them but now you go to asi museum i told him who i am and the curator was very very kind to allow me to photograph otherwise it is written photography is prohibited as usual but since i told who i am and why i come all the way from chennai he permitted me to take in the above museum there are five hero stones but i could find only four i don't know what happened the fifth what depicting ships and dated to 11th century to 15th century boats are having raised and pointed ends and curvilinear hull at the bottom it indicated all log boats being kept inside being kept inside they are all well maintained very nicely maintained these are very nicely maintained you see nice pedestal they have put nice pedestal they have put and over that i have taken this much and shown here blown up to sh to warn you to see see the curvilinear boats and nearly this is about 4 feet high but well retrieved and well maintained now well maintained in goa museum this is called stone 1 again this is stone 2 it is here i think see here 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 then stone 3 again here 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 it is yeah the light is subdued here that is why it is not very interesting sub subdued light in the museum and stone 4 again very very clear see boat at this thing see very clear so out of five i could see only four but they are well kept etc now we go to gujarat in our lighthouse darshan having known that there are gujarat some hero stones are there we went searching them i was aware while traveling in gujarat there are hero stones at armada village a small village armada village while enquiring at the post office i will never forget this i am enquiring in the post office a young boy comes suddenly a young boy comes and volunteered to show this place this through narrow alleys we take our car and we came to an open ground where rows of hero stones were well kept well kept the very first place had two showing sail boats and farther still farther when we went we saw near a tank the third one with a very beautiful ship and one more thing here you will see the stones are well maintained well preserved by the relatives but one thing they did is they painted it as uh, uh, kungumam something like that you can so some details we couldn't see 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 the sail ship very beautiful this is the as soon as it came we saw this see the other one fortunately what happened this were covered by cloth you see cloth you can see cloth this were all covered side by side but a man came to us and he volunteered he will remove the cloth and show us see the man is standing in the back opening the cloth that means they are doing putting pujas etc for this then another one is this beautiful see beautiful some near, bit far away near a tank beautiful this thing ship large ship large ship with this thing but again they are very million they have put paint the like kungumam they have put and they have done then comes after the hero comes the burial urns where the departed were buried in those days inam gaon has given us three periods of history three periods of history kal kalotik culture and ancient customs to bury their dead in big urn is 
the transportation of rivers at various period. You see, the urns excavated at Inamgaon belong to three period, distinct period. Period one is Malwa, between 1600 BC to 1400 BC. Jorway between 1400 BC to 1000 BC. The last one is Jorway, late Jorway, 1000 BC to 700 BC. These were all found one above the other. That's the beauty. One above the other. The boats painted on the spouted vessels has raised stem and pro. All the boats depicted on the burial pots resemble same thing, almost one another. Now, who has given this this thing? Dio, the scholar, in 1982, and Dawlikar, another scholar, in 1988. This is from Deccan College of Pune. Their archaeology department, they did the excavation, and they have brought it this thing. And then you will see the photographs, now see. Beautiful, see, pot number one. See, see the painting of the boat. This is only half section they are showing, like that. Then another one, you see, another one. This is called a spouted pot, no spouted. This is called a spout urn. And there's a third one, very beautiful one, spout. Now comes to terracotta seals, which are annexed except you know, where only in Chandra Ketugad. The seals show in one form or other the ship or boat. Chandra Ketugad in West Bengal has given us a beautiful terracotta plaque, fossil plaque, which is kept at the National Museum, New Delhi. Even now it is there. The plaque is decorated and has projected borders on the left and top sides only. One side, right side is broken. The projected border has incised lines within them more decorations. In the center of the plaque, an almost circular band is carved. And within the circular band, seven female figures are stand, seen standing in a boat. A lotus or wheel of decoration is made on the hull. The boat is a log boat having upturned fore and, and decoration. In the top of the stem, and it's, it's likely to be a river or a lake boat. Now you see the thing. What they say is this thing. What they say is these seven ladies represent... Saptakanya and the injection that is the thing is what this lotus symbol shows that they are waiting to see the sun rise. The Lord, see the interpretation of this thing by some scholars. The Saptakanyas they are standing in a boat and they want to worship the first rays of the sun. The sun is nothing but lotus and see the decoration along the plague. This one. Then, again, Chandra Ketugad has brought terracotta seals at Bangad and Abasara. You see, these ships are merchant ships and they carried grains. Thereby, that man became wealthy. And this is an Astosh, Astosh Museum of Indian Art in Calcutta. And another one is a uh, in uh, uh, another uh, this thing, I think, uh, museum there. You see, the vessel shows, after it's designed like a makara mukha. It has a mast and a sail. And it is written in Karashti Brahmi script along the, this thing. You will see the, see? The Brahmi script is here. Like that, here, 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 see? Like this. Similar one was found in the Basara, in, again West Bengal, Chandraketgarh. There the seal was very, very light, not visible, but line diagram shows people are standing there. Now who is this? Who is this? Now they say, will come. A Gupta period terracotta seal was found in Basara. The figure of the ship is not very clear. So the line diagram is given. The ship, a large one, side being higher than the bow and stern. A long oar at the right suggests it is a stern. At amid ship, a small platform is seen with a figure, Goddess Lakshmi standing. 
that is what they gave me it's written by deciphered by john marshall 1917 he says that trigger is lakshmi and trigger is lakshmi you see that trigger is lakshmi she says this lakshmi again break and seals beautiful or this thing sales this all grain ships grain they carried grain and the merchant the owner became wealthy now as i told you sometime the dark ages come then the coins come to our rescue this is a beautiful map i could get called janapadas there are so many janapadas at that time during which punch mark coins were given one is vanga vanga dynasty again at chandrakhetgarh was their capital city and they have brought a beautiful silver coin small one if you see that see see the size of it see and the coin has a ship like this and two punch marks like this different different but the boat is common boat is common and this are called karshapana and excavated from chandrakhetgarh in the capital vanga of janapada you see and you can see this coins are 3.5 kilograms and 13 by 15 mm size so small very small so uh, coins come to our help this is pallava dynasty well known again pallava brings out your uh, coins with a mast ship our own this thing then we go to deities seated in the boat the last one we pay our respects to the british they are all seated the deity is nothing but mahishasura mardini you see the thing all our mahishasura mardinis this place is called guleli guleli and one more thing is all the uh, this thing deities are on the ground open ground open ground what called plantation groves etc they call it sacred grove all are open they say they wanted to why with nature that's why they keep their goddess outside in the nature that's the explanation gave me then this is another one at bironda bironda then Ag- nagavam beautiful boat you see very beautiful boat there beautiful boat here devi is standing you see devi is standing and jarme this is a very beautiful sculpture lying outside the temple at the behind of the temple rather and you will see here it is a gajalakshmi with two gajas that is two elephants but see the boat here see the boat see the boat here and again here the boat beautiful boat two people you know it's called gajalakshmi and the place is called jarme jarme and i think this last is called sanwar day very beautiful and uh, excellent uh, this thing sculpture see the boat obviously people are doing some puja the flowers are there flowers are there etc now namaskar hope you all enjoyed the glorious past created by our ancestors who wanted us to remember their exploits again i'm hem chandra namaskar i didn't i not take too much time oh, can we take some questions from the audience well me sure well uh now we'll take some questions if you have any questions please uh, feel free to ask Ah. Constantly call them boats. I mean, this is probably the uh, elephant, uh, the ampari on top of that elephant. That is called howda. You are correct. Gajalakshmi howda with two boats on the howda. Why, why are you calling it as a boat? Sir? It has to be. No boat are sculpted on the top. Gajalakshmi is not seated here. Gajalakshmi is not. But if you could go back to the. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, you see here. Those two. See these two. Yeah. This is a decoration. Gajalakshmi is seated here. Right. Why Gajalakshmi? Because Gajas are there, two That's elephants. Correct. Correct. So this is happened, and this is another common Gajalakshmi in uh, many temples in in Goa. And not all temples have got this boat. You see, not all temples. Not all temples have got this boat decoration on the top. Whether that is a boat at all. Yes, it's a boat. It's a boat. I because I have gone there myself, and uh, we have taken it. That's why you know it's a boat, and it is recorded by that uh, well-known uh, research scholar, Dr. Pratima Kamath. She has also recorded it. So it's a boat. You see some decoration on the howda. This howda they call it. Correct. Yes, the number two is very very important. River Mahadevi flows nearby. It comes from the north one, and later part is called Mandovi River. And all the deities are within 50 meters of this great river Mahadevi. Mahadevi, they say Mahadevi. And most of the temples now they say the, uh, the the sculptures have been thrown into the river. I don't know what purpose has been served, but many are there. But we have counted twenty-one. Myself and himself went last. We saw five. So we are now going again to see the. If Mah Mahishasur Madhuri gives us darshan, I hope she will give the darshan. Yeah. Pardon? Did you come across any ancient book? Ah. No, we we didn't come there. It is only in the sculptures we are seeing. Actually, I was telling you while coming. Next time, why don't you Tamil Nadu heritage make a tour of Thondi and Adiramapatnam and places like that where boat making is the this thing very very distinct. Ah. Uh, are there ancient words? Yeah. That books uh, or work, let us say. Yeah. That talk of boat making, the technology. Yes, 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 yes. Why ancient books? Why ancient books? My Sanskrit texts are there, giving in detail part by part of the ships. Gupta period, he had a vast navy, and it's given very clearly who is who, who is who, who is who. So there's great literature even in Tamil. When both of us went to Tanjore, uh, huh? Yeah, uh, Tanjore and uh, Mahal. Uh, Saraswati Mahal. I have talked to that gentleman curator, and he was very much uh, this thing. Immediately took three books in Tamil. So I requested him. I can't go through that with my limited time. Can you do one more thing? What? Can you Xerox it and give me? He did it, and in that Tamil, it is very beautifully written. Every part of a ship. Now my challenge to any author or a scholar is show me a physically one ship, either in sculpture. On painting, nowhere. We are writing so many books. Yes, detail. Everything is there, but no. But if you go to Boro Budur, you can see our ships. There is Oriya ships there, not Tamil ships, not Tamil ships. In Archive dot org, ah, there is a work called Kappal Satpiram. Yes, yes. Uh, which is a very small, some roughly seventy page book. Ah, huh. Tamil in verse form. I have also uh, uh, come across uh, uh, just a couple of days back. I was looking at the um, Kalpataru. You think Kalpataru? Kalpataru, that's a. Kalpataru by Raja Boja. Uh, yes, yes. 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 Yes.
and they sculpted it is not tamil ship that's what i'm trying to tell they are all indian ships no doubt about it with outrigger everything but beautifully sculpted on outer wall outer wall yes it is there is that but uh, think kalinga ships not uh, the same that's one thing yeah yes yes boat building yeah. they are called uris or dos single latin sail yeah. or two latin sail which go in the arabian sea towards middle east you know dubai even now those people come here the sheikhs come here to make a very expensive they make with well, nice yes vasco da gama landed at place called kapad Yes, near, near, near Calicut. I had been there. Unfortunately, our stupid people have not cared. A monument is there, written Vasco da Gama landed. But the filth is surrounding, unbearable. I have taken a photograph of mine with them. But sorry to say, it is not on the beach, but inside. Kapad is a well-known place. But Beepur, all those places are. well known for boat building not only boat building boat miniatures also they make small miniatures as a gift so myself when he went we picked up couple of them couple of them from there so that is there but here we try ourselves we are not getting anything i tried my best to get for that katumaram i made my house my museum if you come see actual katumaram discarded by the thing age old maybe 80 100 years old I got some carpenters to carve and make katumaram in my house. About six are there in my house. Six are there. Yeah. This is only to break everybody to bring one place, because these are all found in different different books. Okay. Thank you. Please wait one second, sir. Huh? You can wait here for a second. Just give me a second. <coughs> Thank you, sir, for the wonderful talk. On uh, behalf of Tamil Heritage, we want to present you a gift as a token of our affection. I request Badri to uh, hand over the gift to you. Thank 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 you. before uh, we wind up for the day uh, the december uh, month we have the what we call the pechika cheri on pandiyas it's a two day event december 14th and 15th saturday sunday starting from morning 9 am to 5 pm it will be at the tamil virtual academy in kotturpuram so because we have that uh, december program there won't be a monthly lecture in the month of december so there is no first week monthly meet uh in, in december so we'll again meet here in the first week of january but we all look forward to we don't know whether january will be here yeah yeah we we will so we will uh, we will make the announcement uh in, in december and uh, so we look forward to seeing you at at the pechi kacheri in tamil virtual academy all our programs are free except for those workshops and classes so you are welcome to you know attend all the programs and i hope if you want to get the notification please uh, give us your email address the notebook is right here so if you just write your name and address we will uh, send you the email and uh, thank you all for coming for the day thank you